pop quiz. Which one of these two images do you think is generated by an AI? Well, actually they both are. It's just that one was made in 2016 and the other was made in 2022. This fascinating progress in AI-generated anime characters has evolved unexpectedly over the past 5 years, all thanks to Gen, an AI technique that generates images proposed back in June of 2014. Fast forward to today, in the rapid growth of anime AIs and you guys wanted me to make more anime-related AI content, I have decided to make this video and bring you guys a brief history in the current state of anime-generating AIs. June of 2014, when the Generative Adversarial Network aka GEN was published, it was certainly the key development into making image generation possible with qualities that we've never seen. And in the meantime, we are also inspired by what our ancestors famously did, putting two favorite things together, meat and fire, wood and stone, and thus now anime and GENs, bringing forth the dawn of anime face generation. Even though the idea of anime face generation has been frequently tested ever since the development of Gen and its variants, many still fail to generate decent results by training based on anime faces. DC Gen in January 2016, Illustration Gen in August 2016, and Anime Gen in February 2017 all share a very similar problem where the trained anime faces always result in blurred or distorted images, or with features nothing like the actual anime characters. This could have been a problem because of how these early Gens relied heavily on upsampling noises and textures, which is perfectly fine process for real life images and the faces, but not for anime faces since in contrast anime faces lack texture and are highlighted in its simplicity instead. This conflict did not improve until the August of 2017 when the project Make Girls Moe made an unprecedented success in generating anime faces. Through relying on training a custom made dataset and using a new research at that time called How to Train Your Drag Gen for training a Gen and AC Gen to provide control on the hyperparameters. The author also created a website make.girls.moe to flex its controllability and it has blown many people away with what Gans can really do just after 3 years of a bumpy ride. Shortly after, the publication of a research paper called Progressive Growing of Gans proposed a new idea of progressively growing the generators and discriminators based on the resolution. This massively improved the training speed. The improvement of the quality however is nowhere as significant. And this is also the point where interpolation videos of anime faces gained its rise. By outputting a point and moving it continuously in the latent space of a model, we get this weird morphing video of faces transforming into other faces, while every frame is a face of its own. This is because every point in the latent space only differs slightly to its neighbor, so that when you go down neighbor by neighbor, you will create a continuous transformation effect. And boom, Stalgan was dropped by NVIDIA like a nuclear warhead in the realm of AI and revolutionized GANs entirely. In December of 2018, the next high definition of image generation was introduced by NVIDIA Labs, bringing us a revolutionary quality of generated real life images and also with a surprising twist. It works beautifully on generated anime faces. However, although the introduction of the progressive design on Gen seemed like a great idea, Style Gen chose not to rely heavily on that function, allowing both the real life and anime characters to be well generated without much difficulty in a shorter time. This was definitely a theoretical success, but how did the jump in quality from Pro Gen to Style Gen happen exactly? Unfortunately, the process of figuring out how and why is far too sophisticated and expensive, so it will probably remain as a mystery forever. But I mean, at the end of the day, oh as well, so why not just take the dub? Parallel to the introduction of generating anime characters, the Dan Buru dataset also came under the spotlight, becoming the most popular place to gather anime dataset for training these Gen AIs. Dan Buru dataset is a crowdsourced image board where people can freely post images on, 
create tags, and give the images some detailed description. This became incredibly useful for data training as it's constantly expanding and has very accurate tags. On the other hand, people can also upload freely. So, uh, yeah, browse with caution. Stalkin opened up a lot of fun applications and experiments, most notably the creation of thiswaifudoesnotexist.com made by Gwern, which combines GPT to generate a backstory with every anime face it shows. So every time you refresh the page, you will be greeted with a brand new, unique, and never before seen anime face. It was mostly inspired from thispersondoesnotexist.com, excluding the text generation part. And although the website has been updated with the latest and the best generation tech, back in when it was just published, it was still incredibly fascinating and intriguing. At the same time, Gwern also experimented with transfer learning, blending anime to real faces or real faces to anime, harvesting some pretty entertaining results. Another widely known website called Art Breeder was also created soon after Stalgen was published. It initially only runs on Big Gen, published 3 months before Stalgen, but eventually also picked up Stalgen which my guess is to generate anime characters. Art Breeder in its essence lets you manually browse through the latent space of its AIs by having the website lay out a few directions for you so you can find the exact direction of edits of the image that you find fitting and can continuously explore in different directions. This is similar to morphing videos, but instead of exploring in a random direction, you can pick it. There are some great art breeder examples like the classic anime characters IRL on YouTube or TikTok, and I've got to say this tool is really entertaining to play with yourself too. And its wide range of niche applications would definitely keep it running long into the future. In December 2019, just a year after Stalgen was published, Nvidia bestowed Stalgen 2 upon us, along with fewer artifacts, throwing progressive design out of the window, and a more consistent generation in general. With the slow rise in popularity of anime-generated faces, scholars started throwing even more ideas at Stalgen 2 to receive increasingly better results. This led to a lot of implementation papers like Gans and Roses for more controllable diverse style and image translation to anime style, Naver Webtoon Faces for generating webtoon looking faces, Cartoon Stalgen for a stable way to fine tune Stalgen 2's pre-trained models and protect the original structure, and the most experimental one. This this anime does not exist.ai, published by Adao in Gen of 2021. What's so special about this is that this model was trained on Danbrew 2019 and not trained exclusively on faces. This means that this anime does not exist.ai can generate full on artwork of anime illustrations in an incredibly wide range of ways. Different poses, different backgrounds, different body types, different angles, different faces, different body parts? Different. What, what, what even is this? Anyways, since there's a huge variety of poses and other creative decisions in making an illustration, its difficulty in retaining structures is incredibly high. And there's no specific input to teach AI on where the body is and where the body ends on every single image. I'll be impressed if a generated character has four limbs attached ready, let alone logical clothing, hand pose, or simply a symmetrical face. I tried to cherry pick a few, but to find a normal looking one may actually be very difficult. What I also observed is that some can imitate incredibly high quality anime illustrations, while some are at beginner level when you compare how they are being colored and shaded. But to be honest, just by giving it a glance, you would think most of them look normal. It's only when you give a closer look again that you will realize there is something wrong with it, which is weirdly funny in some cases. And although other style can do unrelated research like image to image translation paper you get it and the service selfie to anime.com where you can turn your face into style of an anime character is pretty cool but anime gan v2 has recently topped it with its incredible consistent and beautiful results i've also made a video about that so feel free to check that out 
As for the release of Style Gen 3 in October of 2021, the quality for generating the anime faces didn't really make much difference, so I wouldn't cover that much about it here. However, the morphing video does look much more different than Style Gen 2 because Style Gen 3 fixed the texture sticking issue to preserve better geometrical quality. But this doesn't change much when it comes to generating singular anime images, so I think the improvement would be more difficult from now on. Or would it? Things got a lot more unreal when companies started to commercialize anything. In the anime AI generation aspect, we are starting to see various mind-blowing technologies that are in the making or being published. For instance, Takasaka on Twitter has posted one of their projects in Gen 2022, which generates an anime face from a very simple illustration live. You can see how the facial structure changes as he edits the sketch on the top left and how consistent the results are at the bottom right. What's even better is that when the sketch of the eye is enlarged, the size of the eyes in the bottom right changes to a different style that suits big anime eyes. The demo also shows controllable features that you can adjust after drawing, and the styles are really consistent and do not alter much of the facial structure, which is incredible. Another impressive project is definitely Waifu Labs, published in Gen of 2022. I would say they probably somehow mastered the technique to generate very consistent and accurate anime faces because every one of their results just looks so clean and well made. Unfortunately, they only made a very general introduction on how their models are trained and did not reveal the exact details on how they've done it. I am definitely in awe of these beautifully generated characters though. You can also try out their demo generator on their website too. It gives you some creative control to an extent, so it makes you feel like you are in an actual waifu lab designing anime characters. The last one is Crypco, officially released on April 26th, which is kind of like a blockchain unique owning service where you can own your uniquely generated anime characters on their website. What's different from Waifu Labs is that Crypco actually generates half-body anime characters with a very decent consistency and lets you blend them to your other uniquely owned anime characters or simply adjust their styles. The catch here is that you have limited energy to perform actions like generating new characters or combining them or changing their style, and if you want more, you can pay a subscription to obtain more energy regeneration and such. But the customizations are actually very well designed and accurately shown on their demos. They also show that you can control the movements of your characters, which is pretty interesting. And these are probably the peak of AI anime generations up until the current time. It is kind of unfortunate though that the high quality ones aren't open sourced at all and we can find out exactly how they've done it. So I guess we'll have to wait until the next huge step in advancements to truly obtain the power ourselves. Even though this video is more centralized around the anime generation, there are still a lot of other anime related AI research that is not related to image generation so I didn't really have a chance to talk about them. Some of them have a very long and huge open source development that has an interesting story so I'll just give them a brief mention here. AI coloring is an interesting application that was highlighted with the project Style to Paint made by Lu Min Zhang and I have a very old video about it you can check it out. What it basically does is that it automatically colors a general region for you by simply selecting a color. The original project was published in Gen of 2018 and they might be having another brand new project released called the Project Sepa which would be the next generation of Style to Paint. Turning images into anime style also became very popular around the release of Anime Gen V2 with its super realistic cartoon face filters. From transferring real life sceneries into different anime styles like Ghibli, 
Anime Gen has been a long running project since mid July 2019, with a lot of implementations and similar variations like white box cartoonization from a wide variety of authors and contributors. The face filters were only released in a modified version of Anime Gen V2 in October of 2021, while Anime Gen V3 has made a slight improvement in general scenery style translation for images in December of 2021. I also made a video about Anime Gen V2's face filters so feel free to give that a look too. Talking Head Anime 2 released in April of 2021 is a project made by Pramuk where you can input a single anime front portrait and you would be able to animate it live with a facial motion capture. This definitely gives some vibes of VTubers and being able to animate these faces with only a singular image is just absolute mental. I made a video about me trying to deep fake VTubers with this. Feel free to check my custom demos out. And lastly, there is this live 3D neural rendering for anime where you just need to provide a simple character sheet and you can use full body motion capture to output an animated version of the anime character. It is specifically designed for anime characters which is impressive but unfortunately no papers or anything related to it has been released since the publish of this demo so I guess we'll only have to wait and see. Although we have reached this far, I believe that we can still go much further. Looking back, all of this happened within a time span of 5 years. The speed of the advancements in the AI field is really at its prime right now. Additionally, there is also the use of AI art generators to generate anime characters, but that's a video for another day. All in all, it's obvious that the relationship between anime AI and mainstream AI development is highly correlated. So with the speed of research publications, I'll probably see you all again in another video of anime waifus somewhere in the near future. And today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can freely explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and have fun with your creativity. And after this video, you probably will want to know more about AI and machine learning. Then I suggest this class called Artificial Intelligence for Beginners, Tools to Learn Machine Learning by Alvin Wan, which provides a very great introduction into practical machine learning. The lessons aren't that long either, so you can easily go through them to during your free time. What's even better is that they are currently also providing an offer of one month free premium trial which provides you with plenty of time to go through these short lessons. And even if you are done with that class, you can also check out their other amazing ant free and high quality creative classes like photography, illustrations, and video editing. The first 1000 people to click the link in the description or use the code BUYCLOUD will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Lastly, thank you for watching, a big shout out to Andrew and many other patrons and members that support my work through Patreon and YouTube. I also recently just published my website so feel free to check it out, it's pretty neat. If you have any questions, feel free to join my Discord community too. Follow my Twitter if you haven't and I'll see you all in the next one.